Hi. Hi, Jackie from Famish Farm. How you guys doing? It's over 60 today, so I finally can get in the garden and work on some plans here. So I've taken away the wood raised beds from around these three straw bale planters. And the planter that's right in front of me here is where the tomatoes were last year, both Rutgers and cherry tomatoes. And they shaded the two new blueberries I put in to the right of that. In this planter, there were more cherry tomatoes on the far end. And then the near end had peppers, sweet peppers and pole beans. And then the planter to the left, where you can see some green growth, that is some uh, cabbage plants that I put in late. I've done absolutely nothing to them. Um, I'm afraid the freeze may have gotten them, but I'm just going to let them hang on and see what happens. What was in this bale, the two bales uh, last year, were prolific cucumbers and then I planted cabbage and carrots on the near end that did not do anything and then I replanted with cantaloupes that didn't end up doing well either. From the end of the old planters to that crepe myrtle bush is about 24 feet and that's going to be additional planting. Not the whole thing will be um, plantable space but we're definitely extending the garden out. Um, to the right, now to the top of the screen, I'm just going to have straw bales just set out with no planter around them. I did the wood planters with these cool raised bed blocks from Home Depot and wood that we already had it just laying around. I, I had to buy uh, a few 2 by 6s or 2 by 4s I can't remember, to finish them, but we basically had the the wood in place. So this is going to be where I have this row of straw bales and I'm not sure how many, uh, perhaps six, perhaps 10. I don't, we don't know. I don't know. We'll see what we make of it. And then now from this view, you can see the existing planter that I've got wood around. And that was just I threw in the first year we planted, we gardened, I threw in some strawberry plants there and they produced fine. They would, I'm sure, produce better with more attention to the bed. And then I'm going to swing around here. I'm walking through a re relatively flat uh, surface that has sandy soil and this is where the previous owners had their swimming pool. And um, you can see there is a slope down to that section. And then, but this pretty much encompasses the garden for 2024. That's the neighbor's end over there, our farming neighbor's end there. I've had corn and cotton planted in that field. And then to the back is the neighbor's business. So that's our little chunk of heaven there, Rod's little dumpy area. Um, that's where he keeps a tarp with the some of the implements for the garden tractor that don't fit. And then I have a leaf mold area with the flapping landscape screen. And to the right of that is uh, grass clippings and more leaves that aren't chopped. And my compost area is on the other side of the shed there. But that's our beginnings of our 2024 garden bed. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure that it will remain exactly like this, but time will tell. Hi guys, Jackie with Famish Farm, and today we're talking about the garden plan for 2024. I've got some new seeds in. I've got some old seeds I'm going to be working with. I've got a new garden plan. I'm changing the orientation of three of my raised garden beds and we're just making changes. You guys know with gardening, it's a constant evolution. And what may grow in Alabama um, didn't grow up north and vice versa. So I'm learning, constantly learning. This is my going to be my third year of gardening in Alabama. We're in the northwest corner. And the first year was a disaster. Uh, the only thing that I produced was a handful of strawberries 
and two cherry tomatoes. The next year, I rejuvenated the existing eight by eight garden bed that had uh, strawberries in it and I expanded the strawberries. I added straw bale gardening. I did six bales of straw bales and that was an overwhelming success for the most part. Had a couple fails, but had an overabundance of cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, pole beans, had minimal success with peppers, and a couple fails, carrots and cabbage, and cantaloupe. But all in all, my pantry shelves in the basement, I've got some stock to use over winter and that is amazing. Um, I thought I had given up canning and here I am canning again. And it's something I do really love doing, so why not do it? So the plan was to expand the garden bed and I did that last year. I used this book from Joel Karsten. I happened to see him in West Bend, Wisconsin at a Mother Earth near News Fair. And I was just so intrigued. But at the time, I lived in northern Illinois with black, loamy, beautiful dirt where you could, you know, throw a plant on the ground and it would root and produce bushels. Um, Alabama is different for me anyway. Um, I was using a garden bed that was already here. It had been not taken care of. The soils compacted. Uh, the strawberries have done fine, but I'd like it to do more for me. So I'm expanding my straw bales this year, and we'll talk about that a little later. So what did I plant last year? Um, what, was, what worked and what didn't work? Um, I planted, I thought, three different or four different kinds of tomatoes, uh, beefsteak, big red, and uh, a, a red cherry tomato, and Rutgers. And unfortunately, in the labeling process, uh, what I thought were cherries turned out to be Rutgers. Uh, the beefsteaks, the big red, didn't show up at all. And that was probably an error in my um, seed starting, you know, trying to gear up to seed start, which I hadn't done in forever. So I had a couple, I had lots of fails on the seed starting journey. Um, did pole beans, those did great. These are just a blue lake. I'm gonna try a bush bean this year, um, seeds I had. I saved some seeds from the pole beans. I'm gonna do some more of these sweet peppers. Um, I'm starting them much sooner. In fact, any day now I'm gonna start my peppers. I think I got several peppers, but they were all small, so I'm hoping for bigger and better. I'm gonna do a, not as many cucumbers as I did last year because I've still got, I'll have pickles for a while downstairs. Um, I have seeds, carrots, and cabbage. These did not do well, probably because they didn't go into the ground soon enough. Um, an early Jersey Wakefield and a Chantenay carrot. We're gonna try those again. And then my husband and I are big salad eaters. So a lettuce blend, and this is just one of many that I had, and I use quite a few of them. We do kale and Swiss chard, and we treat them like baby greens. They go in containers that are right outside the back door. They don't get full sun. Uh, they get morning sun, which is just enough. Easy to keep them watered because they're so close to the house. Um, we also do our herbs in containers and uh, primarily basil, dill, and parsley, but I've got many more that I may or may not try. I need to apparently do rosemary because I cannot find a bottle of rosemary, dried rosemary, to save my life in this house. <laughs> so back uh, a month ago, six weeks, six weeks ago, um, I placed an order that's not true. I started looking at Michigan Gardener, MI Gardener, um, at the seed offerings and, you know, whittled down my $100 order to a $28 order, which I received. I did another small order from a company called Seed Time that had 
$10 free, you pay shipping kind of thing. And we'll talk about those. Oh, you know, one more seed that I've got that I'd like to try are these gourd seeds that I've had for a couple years. And this is just for a craftiness. I like to do crafts. And we have a birdhouse bottle gourd, a speckled swan gourd, isn't that pretty? And this one is a Corsican. And just look at that detail they added to those. It just looks beautiful. And then I've got a big bushel gourd. And I'm hoping maybe that could be like a harvest basket. If, you know, if I can actually grow it. But those space allowing, I would like to try those gourd seeds. But the new seeds I'm trying, and I did plant snow peas last year. Um, didn't start them early enough. Didn't, the cucumbers just took off and, you know, there was not room for them to grow. So these are mammoth melting snow peas. We're going to try that. Uh, Roma tomatoes are going to be my main tomato this year. I'll do, of course, a slicer and a cherry just for, you know, our personal use lunchtime. Uh, lots of lettuces. This one is a salad bowl mix. I'm going to try to do full head lettuces in the straw bales. I've got an iceberg and a butterhead. The iceberg we use for almost weekly a seven layer salad and the butter head I want to use for lettuce wraps. Um, sorrel is another green, and I bought this specifically because it does well in shady areas. And the existing 8x8 plot is being shaded for most of the morning and early afternoon by a sweet gum tree. And so I'm hoping that I can put those to the side of the strawberries and get some uh, baby greens out of it. I'm going to try dried beans for the first time. So I've got black and light red kidneys. I'm trying a squash. I've got an acorn squash I'd like to try. Um, Virginia peanuts and for the first time sweet corn. When we were kids, my dad um, farmed for us kids a sweet corn patch and we would sell sweet corn at the end of our driveway and 12, 13 ears for 75 cents. People loved us. And that was our money to use at the fair. So these are going to be in-ground crops once I get the ground ready. I'm trying uh, Anaheim chili pepper. We like stuffed peppers, but mild ones. So we're hoping that fits the bill. And tomatillas, which I have never grown before. And I love salsa verde. So we're going to try that. And just some flowers. And those are edible. And they're also supposed to be a trap type plant. So we'll see if we can trap some of our nasties from the fields next to us. Um, so using our garden plan that we, I did this a seven day free trial of uh, Grow Veg, I think it is, and I'll be sure to put the correct name on. This is my plan. Plans are great, but the thing with the plan is, for me anyway, I can visually look at the plan and I can come up with ways it won't work. So this has already changed and I'm sure it will change again. And then the other thing that I found um, was uh, that seed time that had the free seeds. They have a kind of a nice calendar where it tells you all different kinds of things, but I liked it primarily for checking when I'm seeding things um, and when I'm direct sowing. So what I need to get started under grow lights and then what I need to be ready to grow in the ground. So that's kind of the plan. We're gonna do some more work in the garden um, to fill those beds, that'll be coming up. But I'm so glad you're here. And please, if you have any comments, if you've tried some of these new seeds that I've not tried before and you can give me suggestions, would love to hear them. If you have gardened in Northwest Alabama and you have some in-ground secrets, let me know. Um, I just wanna provide more food 
Um, this is the year of minimal me, so we're trying to be very mindful of where our money is going. And the garden is a choice. You're going to spend money on your garden, but you're increasing the quality of the produce. You know what goes into it. Um, so that's kind of a key thing for us this year. Um, it's helping me lose weight. It's all good. So thanks for being here. Come back again.